Ripple released its crypto and blockchain predictions for 2023 with a focus on the real world utility from NFTs to CBDCs. Joining us now to discuss is Ripple, Senior Vice President of Global Customer Success and Managing Director for APAC and Mina. Brooks and Whistle. Brooks, thanks for joining us. Great to be here. Thank you for having me. All right. So walk us through Ripple's crypto predictions for 2023 we have here. What, what are you most excited about? You know, it's, first of all, it's great to be back at Davos. Uh, we were here in May. The world has changed dramatically, which I'm sure we may talk about. Uh, but through all of that and through 2022, we had a great year building. And our focus very much in 2023 is to focus on our core business, which is our Ripple Net business, cross-border transactions, making sure that we're moving value cheaper, faster, more reliably, and in a greener fashion uh, across borders using blockchain and digital technology and digital assets. Uh, so we believe that will continue to grow. We're going to continue to focus there. We have a big CBDC effort, uh, central bank digital currency effort. Uh, we're talking about that a lot here at Davos. Yeah, it's a theme. And we're very focused on uh, carbon credits and the climate and sustainability business as well. So I think those three pillars, um, building our team globally as well, big prediction. And we think the noise will continue to be high. But if we focus on the signal of what we're trying to do, this will be another good year for Ripple. All right. So in the report, it says you believe concerns around liquidity will continue to weed out the crypto companies that have relied on the hype crises, <laughs> cycles rather. Tell us what you mean by that. Sure. Absolutely. Um, look, in May, when you were here and going down the promenade, which I know you all were here as well, it was crazy. I've been coming to Davos since 2010 and have seen different iterations like your previous guest. Um, and that was the height of the hype factor, even though it was a bit dated from peak crypto. Um, what we found now is we really want to make sure that every one of our business units or endeavors are going after the things that are real world utility that are solving real problems and not just solutions looking for problems. So that's really what we mean by that. And we're going to dedicate resources around the world to do that. We're building outside the U.S. very rapidly, uh, given the opportunities we see. But we're not going to go kind of off piste and try to uh, chase shiny things this year. There's no room or time for that with this kind of environment. In terms of, you mentioned CBDCs is on your radar. In what regard, uh, how are you helping out with that? Absolutely. We have an interesting approach. We're trying to, we realize we're not going to solve that problem for every single central bank around the world. We're very targeted. Uh, we found great interest in some of the smaller uh, central banks around the world that are looking for a strategy, looking for a partner, looking for a technology, a side blockchain, um, ideas about how to go about this. So we had our first MOU sign with the Kingdom of Bhutan in my neck of the woods back in Asia. Palau is an example, but we're in conversations with dozens of central banks around the world trying to figure out the best way to help them across this goal. They want to use XRP or Ripple Labs or to develop it? They want to use technologies that will help them help their own citizens. And so we don't believe there's any one solution for all these central banks uh, in this technology across the world. There's places we can play. There may be a side chain to the XRP ledger. Uh, we may help in the interoperability across this, um, but it's going to be different at every single central bank. Meanwhile, in the United States state side, the SEC is still, we're still waiting for a summary judgment in the case against the SEC that Ripple Labs has. Any update on that? You know, we have done everything we can. We're confident in our position. Uh, we assume that something may happen this year and we may have word. But what I would tell you, and I'm based in Singapore, and so we have been building nonstop around the world, even since the SEC did sue us. And so it hasn't stopped us. It hasn't stopped innovation around the world. Uh, we're hopeful for a positive outcome, but we've built ways around that. And in the meantime, we're dealing with regulators around the world, like the MAS in Singapore, Dubai, Tokyo, here in Switzerland, the UK, that are just much more welcoming. They want to have a dialogue. They want to be in conversation. Uh, and so we're going to keep pushing that one along as well. And we hope the U.S. comes along with this exciting innovation that we're all talking about here. Well, with the crypto collapse that we've seen over the past year, is that sending a chilling effect among the policymakers, uh, businesses that you've been talking with? It does. It has an interesting impact. There's no question it does. And the shame about it is, it is in any conversation, any panel, any meeting with a government or central bank, your first 15 or 20 minutes is talking about three hours capital or talking about what happened in the Bahamas uh, before you get to the substance of the matter. And until we reduce that time and get through that noise and get to actual real utility and what we can do for people, it'll continue to be in our face a little bit. But we're here pushing hard, having conversations, talking to folks like yourself, making sure to get the word out that we're, we're going to build through this and we're excited about it. Speaking of which, we're seeing a lot of layoffs throughout the crypto industry. Is that impacting 
the sentiment over at Ripple Labs? Yeah, we have continued to hire. We had a big year. We hired 300 people in 2022. Um, we're not going to hire at that pace going forward, but we'll hire internationally as well. A bulk of those hires that we hire this year will likely be in international offices. Um, so that's where we're headed. Um, we're not going to make predictions about layoffs or headcount, but we we'll feel very good about how we built. Meanwhile, uh, Ripple and Solana are teaming up apparently with the uh, Global Blockchain Business Council to explore crypto-based solutions for climate change. Tell me a bit about that. We're excited. I mean, really from the very beginning when the XRP Ledger was founded uh, and our founder, Chris Larson, there have been a real commitment to the environment uh, throughout. And we do think there's interesting technologies that we can actually bring to the picture, whether or not it's around the carbon credit business, which is incredibly kind of wild west, just like crypto, a lot of the same issues to solve. Uh, it's tokenization around that. Um, we've often believed from the very beginning that we've been crypto fr or climate friendly. We signed the Crypto Climate Accord first. And so this is kind of another step in the way of, of heading that direction and keeping that priority, which our employees love and people are very focused on. And it's a big topic here as well.